today i am dealing with part 2 of biotechnology that is process of recombinant dna technology already have told you recombinant dna technology helped in producing human insulin by eli lilly company that company is marketing human insulin in the form of humulin for so many years and it is helping millions of diabetic patients now let us see the steps involved in recombinant technology the first step is isolation of the dna or the inter the gene of the interest from a cell if the dna has to be extracted from a bacterial cell the cell wall is first resolved in an enzyme known as lysozyme for plant cells to dissolve the cell wall the enzyme cellulose is employed to extract dna from fungus the enzyme chitinase is used to dissolve the chitinous cell wall of uh, <coughs> fungal cells then dna is always associated with rna and proteins these proteins occur in the form of histone proteins and non histone proteins rna is removed by using the enzyme ribonuclease and the proteins are removed by using the enzyme to proteases in this way dna is freed from all the attached substances and it is subjected to cold ethanol or chilled ethanol as a result the dna strands appear as fine threads then these threads are collected then the dna molecule is subjected to the action of the enzymes known as restriction endonucleases the restriction endonucleases identify a particular sequence of palindrome nature and make a cut into the palindrome sequence the restriction endonucleases make two types of cuts in one type of cut blunt ends are formed in another type the cut is known as staggered cut and sticky ends are formed in the dna molecule then the same enzyme has to be used later on to cut open the vector which is the carrier to help in the multiplication of dna then the due to the action of the <coughs> restriction endonucleases different sizes of fragments are formed so the dna fragments formed due to the action of restriction endonucleases are of various sizes then these fragments are to be separated these fragments are separated by using gel electrophoresis these fragments i have told you of various sizes when they are subjected to gel electrophoresis what happens this the dna molecules are actually negatively charged so they travel towards the anode that's why to the gel electroplate fct is applied and as a result the agarose gel plate conducts electricity and the smaller fragments travel longer distances on the agarose gel plate whereas the larger larger segments or the fragments of dna travel only shorter distances in this way depending on the size of the dna fragment they travel to different distances on the agarose gel plate then the dna fragments are collected from the agarose gel plate by using southern blotting technique then the dna molecule or the gene that is to be cloned is to be selected from these fragments so scientists have a method to find out which gene is to be amplified then they take up that dna fragment and subject it to pcr technology pcr technology means polymerase chain reaction technology the polymerase chain reaction technology is very important in biotechnology this was invented by a scientist known as carrie mullis in the year 1985 for this discovery 
he received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in the year 1993. In polymerase chain reaction, what happens is a suitable medium is made, the DNA fragment is introduced into the medium, then <coughs> into the medium are added primers of DNA and also one enzyme known as DNA polymerase. These two are very important. These primer segments of DNA are very short, having four to six nucleotides. They are single stranded and they have various combinations of nucleotides. These are all artificially made. The primers are made artificially and they help in the synthesis of double stranded DNA from single stranded DNA. Then the enzyme used is DNA polymerase. You know that. DNA polymerase joins the nucleotides according to the base pairing. Here, the enzyme DNA polymerase is corrected from a bacterium known as Thermus aquaticus. Thermus aquaticus is a marine bacterium and it lives at a, at, in the sea, in the sea water where the temperature is very high. The temperature is very high because this bacterium lives at hydrothermal vents present in the sea. Hydrothermal vents are nothing but volcanic eruptions. Because of the volcanic eruptions, the sea temperature is very high. Sometimes it may be more than 100 degrees centigrade. So this bacterium has the ability to tolerate high temperatures. In the case of PCR technology also, the DNA and the enzymes are subjected to a very high temperature that is up to 100 degrees centigrade. That's why the enzyme present in the <coughs> thermos aquaticus is used in PCR technology. So the medium contains the gene of the interest, then artificial synthesis primers and DNA polymerase collected from the bacterium thermus aquaticus. Now, the medium is heated to 100 degrees and then immediately cooled it. This process is called annealing. Because of annealing, what happens? The double stranded DNA gets separated into single stranded DNA. The hydrogen bonds break and the double stranded DNA produces two single strands. Immediately after the separation of DNA into single strands, the primers attach to the template DNA at appropriate site, wherever the <coughs> nucleotides of the primer are complementary to the nitrogen basis of the template DNA, the primer attaches to itself. So in this way, a suitable primer attaches to the template DNA. Here the important point is that both the strands of DNA participate in <coughs> replication. So both the, plate, the template, both the DNA strands act as templates and both the templates synthesize complementary strands. So now first the primer DNA attaches. Now this is the DNA of DNA types from an organism. Then it is cut into bits by the distant nucleases and we get a DNA fragment. This DNA fragment is subjected to annealing as a result. Both the strands get separated. This is one temperate strand. To the temperate strand is attached one primer. This primer attaches to the temperate strand where there is a complementary base pairing. So now let us say this primer is attached here. See, in the temperate strand, this is the 3 end, this is the 5 end. Primer is attached to the 5 end here. Then at the free end here, there is hydroxyl end. Here the free end is the 3 end and 3 end is having hydroxyl end. This is very important because a new nucleotide can attach at the 
free hydroxyl ion. So, in the attachment of nucleotides at the hydroxyl ion is helped by the RNA polymerase. So, after the primer attaches to the template, the DNA polymerase brings different nucleotides and attaches to the template. As a result, the sorry, attaches to the primer. As a result, the primer goes and the complementary stand elongates. And when the complementary stand reaches the 5 end level, the DNA polymerase stops incorporating the nitrogen bases. Then again, the double stranded DNA is subjected to annealing. And again, this process continues. In this way, annealing process is continued many times in the piecing, in the PCR technology. As a result, millions of DNA copies are made. So in this way, DNA amplification takes place through PCR technology. Now we have got enough quantity of DNA. Then, this DNA is to be incorporated into the plasmid or the vector. A suitable vector is selected. A suitable vector must have the gene of origin of replication, the gene of antibiotic resistance, and the lac Z gene. The lac Z gene is used as a selective marker in many of the cases. The lac Z gene is responsible for the production of the enzyme beta galactosidase. Beta galactosidase converts, it has one function already we have studied during lac operon hypothesis or theory. Beta galactosidase splits lactose into glucose and galactose. It has also another function. It converts a substance known as X gall into blue color. X gall is a colorless substance, but the beta galactosidase converts X gall into a blue colored substance. This is of great importance. <clears throat> so, when we insert the DNA of interest or the gene of interest into the vector, what happens? First of all, the vector is cut by the same restriction endonuclease used for cutting the DNA molecule. So, same type of sticky ends are formed and these sticky ends of the DNA of interest and the vector DNA join easily. In this process, the enzyme ligase helps. Here also, in growing the <coughs> complement stand, the enzyme ligase participates. Then, how to know whether the intended DNA is incorporated into the vector or not? We don't know. If the foreign DNA is incorporated into the vector DNA, we call it as recombinant DNA. If it is not incorporated, it is a failure. The experiment is a failure. Then how to find out? This selectable marker gene helps in finding out whether the experiment is a success or a failure. If the gene of interest or the gene insert is incorporated into the lac Z gene. The lac Z gene is disrupted and it is incapable of secreting the enzyme galactosidase, beta galactosidase. In the absence of the beta galactosidase, X-gall substance cannot produce B color, blue color. So in this way, if the experiment is successful, the exegol remains colorless. If the experiment is a failure, exegol produces blue color. So in the in the simple way, it can be found it can be found out whether the recombinant DNA is produced or it is a failure. 
So if the recombination is successful, that is, if the foreign DNA is incorporated into the <coughs> lactose or lac Z gene, the experiment is successful and that DNA or that plasmid is employed in producing the required or the desired product. Now, the plasmid or the vector having the recombinant DNA is to be introduced into the suitable cell. It may be a bacterium or a plant cell or an animal cell. If it is to be introduced into a bacterial cell, the bacterial cell will not accept the <coughs> vector having recombinant DNA. So to force the bacterial cell to accept the recombinant vector, calcium chloride solution has to be used or electricity has to be applied or shotgun method, sorry, or <coughs> these are the methods. Then if it is to be introduced into the animal cell, the recombinant DNA is directly injected into the animal cell. To, in, to introduce the plant cell, shotgun technology is employed. In this way, through various means, the recombinant DNA or recombinant plasmid is introduced into the host cell. Then the host cell is manipulated to produce the desired substance or secretion. So how to obtain the desired product? To obtain the desired product, Bioreactors are employed. Bioreactors. Bioreactors have a capacity from 10 liters to 100 liters and help in the production of the product on a large scale. In the, usually the bioreactors employed are stirring type. They got a stirrer to stir the fluid continuously. So the bioreactor contains a medium, a suitable medium into which the <coughs> the recombinant vectors are introduced, then raw material is added, oxygen is added, proper temperature is maintained, proper pH is maintained. Then it has ports to introduce new media and extract the <coughs> produce out of the reactor. So these bioreactors are used continuously to produce the <coughs> product. The stirrer maintains uniform distribution of oxygen throughout the medium, throughout the bioreactor. The production of the product is very rapid. If it is E. coli, the E. coli multiplies every half an hour and within a day, a billion copies can be made. When there are a billion copies, the production of the product is also very rapid. So at frequent intervals, the medium containing the product is extracted from one side and from the other side, raw medium is added or fresh medium is added. In this way, the fluid extracted from the bioreactor is used to extract the desirable product or enzyme or hormone. Then the product has to be processed. This is known as the downstream processing. The downstream processing of the product involves human steps. First of all, the biotechnology product has to be separated from the medium. Then it is purified. Then it is to be preserved. It should not get denatured soon. So it has to be subjected to preservation process. Then it has to be used in clinical trials to find out its nature and success. After passing the clinical test, the product is sent for quality control analysis. Then proper license is obtained and the product is released into the market. In this way, biotechnology is helping us to produce a large number of proteins, enzymes and hormones cheaply and very fast. This is about uh,
process of recombinant biotechnology.